we're going through different bits and bobs, animation foundational things that you should know, but how they correlate in After Effects. This class is about squash and stretch. What is stretch? If we take this ball, for example, if we were to drop it without any stretch, it could be a bowling ball. But if we do it again and actually add stretch this time, now it's changed its speed. It's probably changed its mass as well. It can't possibly be a bowling ball this time because it's actually got a little bit of wibble to it. A little bit of wibble wobble. What is squash? If we take the ball we had before and we use the initial stretch that we had before, we can see that it's bouncing down. If we isolate the shape, we can see that it's literally just getting longer and shorter when it hits the bottom. But if we introduce squash to this by making it go narrower on its way down and wider when it hits the floor, now this ball could be super squashy. Maybe it's got water inside it. It changes pretty much everything about your animation and your file. Be squishy. Your scale should automatically be separated. If it's not, and you're not sure what I mean, right next to the numbers, there's a little link next to it. When the link is on, it means that both of these, which is the X, which goes left and right, and the Y, which goes up and down, will be connected. Let's stick our keyframe down by turning on the stopwatch. Move the indicator to see this is when Miss Bezier is at her smallest. Let me pull in the width. When it comes back out, the hands are open. We can copy our first keyframe. Hold down Control and C, that's copy. Hold down Control and press V to paste. This way it's going to go back to the same size that we wanted. Press U to see everything and you'll be able to see where certain timed moments are. Now, if we were to press the space button, we can see Miss Bezier moving, but she's not really looking like she's being affected by the hands per se. We can absolutely fix this. Make sure we've got scale selected. Click on our graph editor. If we unlock the right hand and the left hand, press U to open them both. And right next to the stopwatch is the stocks. If we turn them off, it stops them from being seen while we're doing other work. Select our first keyframe. Click this icon right here, which allows us to move it independently. If we wanted this movement to be faster and we make this shorter, it means she gets faster. But if we want it to take longer, we'll make the line longer. If I press play now, it looks like around here, I need Miss Bezier to already be affected by it. Click and drag on this one right here and we're gonna pull this line to the left. The longer this is, it means the longer this position is, the longer the keyframe is that we're going to. But in regards to this other one, it's going to make our first keyframe shorter. Ah, there we go. How are we going to stop this from moving? We're going to select that frame that we did before. We're going to break the tangent in the other direction. And we need her to stay in this way for longer by making the line long. Click and drag in the other direction it sort of matches. I'm going to select the next keyframe, break the tangent in the opposite direction. While we're animating, there's a lot of tricks that we can do. We're being magicians, so you don't really have to do things exactly on time. If the eye thinks something else is happening, leave it at that. Pen tapper! We can see it's reacting before the fun touches it. How do we tweak the intricacies? If you want to use the toggle hold, right clicking your last frame, select toggle hold, copy your last frame, paste and hold control and click. It will stay still between here, but as soon as this last keyframe is done, then it will move up. We want to tweak this a little bit more in depth. How do you do that? Select the graph editor and it looks like I've left on that thing again. This is related to the hand driver. Let's go down to the hand driver and press U and turn off that feature. I want this to stay up until the thumb sort of touches it. Select this one and we need to break that tangent once more. I'm going to break the bottom one as well just to give me more control. I'm just going to drag it out a little bit more and we need it to stay more. So I'm going to grab my bottom one and drag it up. By doing this, it gives more line. It makes the line longer 
from the keyframe we're just coming from. And I'm also going to drag it up. It's going to stay up. I'm even going to push this further to encourage it to stay up because the line to the next keyframe is so short because we've had to push it all the way up to be like a bend in a knee. It looks like it's going to happen immediately as soon as the button push happens. We need it to stay down longer. How do we do that? Select the lower keyframe. We need it to be longer. We break the tangent, break the tangent to the top one as well. Give us more control and drag this out to the right. Make that line as long as you can if you want it to take longer. We've got a squishy pen tap. This is the B bounce. Miss Bezier is here. Let's put a keyframe here. Add a little stretch in here. And when the hit comes, we're going to squish her. Squeeze her down more, make her wider at the end. And then she's got to stretch to come back up. We know to make her wider at the top or whenever she gets touched by the hand. So you kind of want the reaction of the ball to join in with whatever's happening to it. Thank you so much. <laughs>